Listen. Don't do anything, first of all, to attract the attention. You, you have to be like a soldier on a battlefield. If you're a soldier on a battlefield, because that's where you are. We are all on a battlefield. We are on a battlefield. We're not in La La Land. This is not Oz. This is not Shangri-La. We are on a battlefield. And when you look up and you see anybody who might be a suspected race soldier, even six blocks away, have your antenna up to not attract attention, just like you would on a battlefield. You're wearing a uniform. Your uniform is your black skin. And you're not going to attract the attention of a sniper. I mean, you know, there's an enemy soldier over there in the bushes somewhere waiting on somebody like you to come along. Look at it just that way. Yes. Don't do anything to attract attention because that sniper is going to do what a sniper does. If anybody's been in the Army or seen movies about the Army, a sniper does what a sniper does. He takes your head off. Yes. No question. So you got to think like that. You are walking down the street with your black skin. You might attract attention of a sniper. Yes. Think that way. 24-7. All your life. That's going to happen. And when it happens again, it's going to happen again. I don't care how many demonstrations you have, or how many filling stations you burn down. It's going to continue to happen. What you do, you cannot attract that kind of attention. Mothers have to teach their offspring. We're in a war. We are in a war. If you don't know where you are, you're in a war. You're in a war. Anybody spotted with a gun in a war is subject to die instantly or with anything that looks like a gun. Period. Christmas morning, I mean, you got cap guns and whatnot under the uh, under the t- Christmas tree. You go outside with one of those guns and whatnot, you're subject to die. Every yes, every mother has to understand that. Every father. Otherwise, you're just going to keep crying over these funerals. You have to understand the kind of world you're in. You can't be nonchalant about that. Yes, you're sir. not in Oz. You're in a hostile world. You're surrounded by hostility. You always wake up every morning knowing that you're in a war. That, that's, that's the first order of business. We're not in peacetime. There's no such thing as that. We're in the middle of a war that never has been stopped. Mm-hmm. There's, uh, there's no such thing as peace being declared. People declare peace, but I'm talking about in a functional sense. Yes, sir. In, in reality... Ever since the beginning of white supremacy, which is what I call the war, that's the only war that really counts. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. the war. That's the umbrella war Mm -hmm. of the entire planet. It's never stopped since the day that it was established. And everything that happens in a war is just a battle. And uh, so the battles, the different battles are going on in different fronts. I mean, Ferguson and and this and that. But the battles happen every day. Every time there's an encounter. Uh, of conflict between one white person and a non-white person. Every encounter is a part of the war. Yes, sir. In fact, even the most, what you might call, bland or peaceful encounters, it's an encounter because there's a war going on between white and non-white. Yes, sir. Worldwide. Yes, sir. It's never stopped. Never. I mean, and people say, well, oh, I work with white people every day. We get along fine and all like that. You are in a war, whether you know it or not, mm-hmm. because the white supremacists who are running everything have never said that we are declaring a peace. We are continuing the system of white supremacy. So just because there are individual people who are smiling and laughing and joking and whatnot and, and they're going to football games together and waving pennants and all like that, doesn't say that there's not a war going on that is never stopped. So what we need is codification to wrap this war up. It's got to be accelerated, and that's what I try to write with my book, mm-hmm. the textbook for victims of white supremacy. We have to accelerate the, the pace in ridding the world of racism and replacing it with a world of justice. Now, some people have said they've seen some cartoons of my work uh, on the Internet. 
that have been presented and that uh, it, it pretty well embellishes what I have been trying to say in my textbooks. And uh, to the extent that it does that, well, that has been, from what I understand, some people reported to me a plus because they didn't understand what I had written very well, but when they saw those cartoons that just repeated what I was saying and attaching my name to it and uh, came right out of the book, the material did, uh, they say that they better understood it. And I can understand that because people are kind of visual particularly in the year 2021 now, uh, more visual than ever.